In this lesson, we'll take a look at some applications of vector addition. And in this first example, we have uh, a boat that has a water speed of 40 kilometers per hour, and it's heading uh, due south across a river that runs from west to east at 12 kilometers per hour. So this is the uh, vector that represents the velocity of the boat. It's 40 kilometers per hour going uh, due south. Now the river is going from west toward the east, so it's, uh, we would indicate that by going from the left to the right across the page. Notice that we're placing the two vectors head to tail because we're adding them to get the resulting velocity of the boat, which would be the vector that goes from the beginning of the first vector to the uh, tip or end of the head of the last vector. So that vector, that green one, represents the uh, velocity of vector v. So we're going to find the magnitude of vector v first, and since this is a right triangle here, we can use Pythagoras' theorem to find the magnitude of v. Uh, v is the longest side in this triangle, so the magnitude of v would be the root of 40 squared plus 12 squared. And uh, 40 squared is 1600 plus 144, adds to 1744, and the root of that is about 41.8. So that's the magnitude of the uh, velocity vector. It's 41.8 kilometers per hour. Now it's a vector, so we have to specify the direction. That's why the state is in here, because that's how many degrees toward the east from straight south the boat is going. And so we can find that actually by using any right angle trigonometry, because we, uh, we know all three sides. I'm going to use the 12 and the 40, but we could have certainly used the 41.8 as well. The 12 is, for that angle, the opposite side. The 40 is the adjacent. It's beside the angle. So that's why I'm going to use tan. Tan is opposite the 12 over the adjacent the 40. 12 divided by 40 is 0.3. To find the angle, we take the arctan, or inverse tan, of 0.3, which is about 17 degrees. So 17 degrees is how many degrees toward the east from straight south the boat is actually heading, the actual velocity of the boat. So we would answer the question by saying the resulting velocity of the boat is 41.8 kilometers per hour at a direction of south 17 degrees toward the east. In the second example, we have an airplane that's flying on a heading of 310 degrees. Now, remember, straight north is zero, so if we rotate around to here, that's 90. If we rotate around to here, straight south would be a bearing of 180. Uh, this would be uh, straight west would actually be a bearing of 270, because 90 plus 90 plus another 90 is 270. So that's 40 bigger than 270. So that's why 40 degrees up in this direction, that's 40 degrees, is the... Um, uh, heading that the uh, airplane is flying on at 425 kilometers per hour. Now we we're adding the two vectors, this vector and the wind vector. The wind is blowing on a bearing of 70, deg 70 degrees at 55 kilometers per hour. So here's the uh, the vector that represents the wind. This would be 70 degrees in here, so this is 20 degrees here. Remember those two angles would add to 90 because that's a 90 degree angle right there. And so uh, I could have put a 70 in here. The only reason I'm not is because it'll clutter up my diagram. So this would be 20 degrees if that's 70. Now I'm going to use the parallelogram law of addition, so I'm going to place another plane vector there, another wind vector here. And so the sum of the two vectors is the vector that goes from where the two tails are to where the two heads are. So that's the velocity vector. Now in order to find that, we're going to use the cosine law. In order to use the cosine law, we need to find what this angle is between the two vectors. So in order to find that, we're going to first find this angle here. And that angle there, we can break it into this angle right here that the uh, 425 makes with the north, and then the angle that the north makes with the um, blue vector here. So if this is 40, then this would have to be 50. And so we're going to add to that the size of this angle from the north down to here. And that angle is 70. We're actually given that in the problem. So if we add 50 and 70, that's 120. So this angle right in here is 120. Now this is a parallelogram. So if that's 120, remember in a parallelogram, adjacent angles are supplementary. They add to 180. So if that's 120, then this angle here would be 60 because those two angles add to 180. If that's 120, then this angle over here is also 60. Opposite angles are also the same in a parallelogram. So if we needed to know it, this would actually be 120 up here as well. But that's the only angle we really need, that one right there that's 60. So now that we have 
two sides and the angle between them, we can use the cosine law to find the third side. That's what we want to find now. So calling that v, the length of v would be the root of, and this is just a cosine law, the a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos, the opposite angle. And so um, 425 and 55 are the uh, two sides here, and 60 degrees is the angle. Now in order to evaluate this, if we evaluate all that, we get 160,275. And then uh, taking the square root of that, this side works out to be about 400 kilometers. So 400 kil sorry, kilometers per hour is the speed. Uh, the magnitude, is, of course, is the speed. Now it's a vector we're trying to find, so we need to indicate a direction. And in the diagram, I'm going to put uh, the angle theta here. So theta is how many degrees past that bearing of 310 around to here we're uh, going to have. So we can find that by using the sine law. We actually know all the sides in this triangle now, and we know an angle. This is 60. So we have this angle and the opposite side pair. So we can use the sine law to find that. We could use the cosine law as well. So the sine of this angle over 55 is equal to the sine of 60 over 400. And that's the sine law. So um, uh, simplifying or isolating sine theta, it would be the product of 55 and the sine of 60 divided by the 400. If we evaluate this, we get 0.1191. And we'll take the uh, arc sine or inverse sine of 0.1191. And we'll get theta to be about 7 degrees. So the bearing is, and remember that was 310 plus another 7 would be 317. So the plane's velocity, the actual velocity relative to the ground, is 400 kilometers per hour and at a bearing of 317 degrees. If the plane the pilot actually means to go in this direction, then they're actually 7 degrees off course. Last example, uh, a 4 kilogram steel ball is propelled off a track horizontally with a force of 200 newtons. And the force of gravity on the ball is 40 newtons which of course is straight down. We're asked to determine the resultant force on the ball. So the resultant force is the sum of this force and the 40. So the resulting force is that vector right there. And in order to find that size of that vector, uh, again, this is a right angle triangle, so we can use Pythagoras' theorem. And we'll need this angle to specify a direction for this, uh, velocity, this uh, resultant force and we'll call it r, r for resultant. So the length of r, again using Pythagoras' theorem, be the root of 200 squared plus 40 squared, which is uh, 200 squared plus 40 squared is 41,600. Taking the root of that, we get about 204 newtons. So the size of the force is about 204 newtons. To find the uh, angle, uh, we'll use tan again. The opposite side for this is 40, and the adjacent is 200. 40 divided by 200 is about 0.2. And then taking the inverse tan of that, we get the angle to be 11 degrees. So that's the direction, 11 degrees below the horizontal. So the resultant would be 204 newtons, and that's newtons, not north. Uh, and 11 degrees below the horizontal is the direction. And that's the end of the lesson.